Hello and welcome to my Magma tutorial for Dwarf Fortress. In this one I'm going to give you a general overview about the topic of magma, how to find it, how to handle it, all these things, and in the second part I'm going to build a magma forge slash smelter with you because I figured that this is a wonderful first project to do. It is super useful and you learn a lot about magma while working with it. So first off, where do we find magma? We can find magma on volcano tiles as a endless resource that's just spawning somewhere on the map and it also never erupts. The second source is the underground magma sea to be found somewhere around minus 120-ish elevation levels. It's a worldwide network of lava that's everywhere so you basically will always hit it somewhere down below and it's always found below the third cavern layer. It's also pretty much an endless resource. Alongside goes the third source and that's magma pools but they should be actually more called like magma tubes because they are basically connection pipes between the underground magma sea and some underground area above. Sometimes they can be 40s at levels deep, sometimes they're way less and it's actually hard to discern if it's still underground sea or a magma pool. But a general thing is they are encased by obsidian walls. That's one of the typical things to notice a magma pool at. Magma pools also refill automatically, albeit slower than volcanoes. So, characteristics of magma. Just like you would expect it, it sets things on fire when it touches them. So dwarfs catch fire and die. Flammable things catch fire and get destroyed. What doesn't get destroyed? What's magma safe? So magma safe stones are marked like that. You have a green check mark on them and they are quite available and one of the easiest ways to make magma safe things. There are other magma safe materials to know though and these are iron, steel, glass and nickel. You can use these, especially glass is pretty cool because once you have access to magma you can virtually produce glass endlessly because you don't need fuel anymore and sand is endless so it's only bound to work for us. Glass is a brilliant magma safe material. So that being said, there are a couple of interesting exceptions. Walls, floors, ramps and stairs, they don't care about what material they are made of. Even if it's flammable, it won't interact with magma. Oddly enough, as it is right now, you can build a lava reservoir with wooden walls and they won't catch fire because they are walls and walls are pretty much indestructible right now. I think this will get changed in the future, but as it is right now while I'm recording this, it is like that. So you can use these things, of course, to your advantage, but note that it's really only these four things here. A bridge made out of flammable materials will go poof when it uh, touches magma. Also worth noting, fortifications will let magma through and once they are fully submerged in magma they will also let creatures through. Which brings me to the next point. Magma is a environment where some creatures can live in. So whenever you find magma you must be aware of the fact that you're connecting yourself to the entire worldwide network of things that live in the magma. So the easiest way to counteract that is working with grates that block out those critters when you are doing a construction like that. I'm going to showcase that later when we're doing the demonstration. I think we are almost done. There's only two more things that I want to add. Magma evaporates just like water. When there's only one of seven units of magma on the floor, it will evaporate. This means that magma will eventually go away if there is well, if there is too much room for the supply of magma, if it's still too unclear, if I dig a channel like that, this one thing, it has a finite amount of squares that it can flood because only so and so much magma will be able to travel through this small channel. It is not easy to give you an exact number of how far this will flow or anything, but as a rule of thumb, people say that a channel of two can support a channel of 3 width and 20 length. Those are numbers that I heard so far. 
Take them with a grain of salt. It always depends on what kind of lava source you have. But the gist of it is, if you want to fill a huge room with magma, you also have to take into consideration this stuff can and will evaporate. And if the supply ain't large enough, the room is can be under some circumstances not be filled with magma. That being said, the last thing, flowing magma doesn't have pressure. If you don't know what pressure means and how it works in this game, let me summarize it real quickly and grossly simplify it. When fluids fall down, namely water, it exerts pressure. That means if it falls down 10 levels downstairs, it will splash upwards and do crazy things and be everywhere. And there are rules to that, which I won't explain here because that would way would be way too deep. But the gist of it is magma doesn't do that. If magma falls downstairs somewhere, it doesn't splash up. It's too slow flowing, I guess. That being said, it's also flowing a little bit slower than water, but really just a little bit slower. You, your dwarfs will catch fire and die if you, if you don't take care. That being said, magma can have pressure once it's been transported by a screw pipe. So really be, uh, screw pump, sorry. So really be careful. The moment you start pumping magma, it behaves like water pressure wise. If you don't know what all these things uh, are meaning, check out a pressure tutorial. It will give you all the insights that you need. So those are the do's and don'ts around magma. So let's build that thing. What I want to do here is I want to build up a quick setup for a magma forge down here. So somewhere here and somewhere there. So we now go downstairs and here we will bring up a the chamber where the magma will be in. So we want the, the magma in there. So we are going to go and dig earth a downstairs here. And we're going to need an exactly same sized room like that. And the next thing we do is we go one next level downstairs. It'll all make sense in a moment. So next thing we do, we connect that to the magma. So this room will have the tools. This room will have the magma. And then we are facing the problem that the moment we breach this wall, magma will flow in and the poor dude doing this will die. We can avoid that though. First off, very important, we slap down a door made out of a magma safe material. That's imperative. So really, really do these. And then the easiest method to make sure that nobody will die is kind of an exploit that I'm going to showcase here. So we're going to go and dig a channel downstairs here. So we're going to have a ramp then here. So this thing here, you see, boom. And then we go all the way over on there. So this is the way, way back for the person doing the job. So the next step is we're going to build a bridge over this thing. I'm using a retracting bridge here because they look nicer. I'm building this directly on top of the ramp. Boom. And I'm also making this out of a magma safe material. Again, bridges can burn up if they aren't out of made out of a magma safe material. And now we just have to wait until these things get mined out. So the bridge will be built here. So what does this uh, what does this bring and why do I need to do that? So this is kind of a weird exploit. The dwarf standing on this tile here will now be able to somehow magically mine this tile here upstairs. I'm going to show you in a second as soon as this uh, bridge has been built. The gist of it is with this little exploit we can stand down here, remove that piece of wall there and then the magma will flow safely in there because it will flow over the bridge without hurting the poor guy down here and then he will escape upstairs. This is, I don't know if it's an intended uh, thing to do or not, but I don't care. The next important thing is we need to make sure that the stones here are forbidden because we don't want anybody accidentally running in there. We forbid that door as well because that would be quite lethal as well. So next step, we go downstairs and we just mark that thing to be mined. And as you see here, it's now an activated job because magically that dwarf can stand on that ramp 
and carve it away. And as you see there, it's now flowing safely in there. No magma down here. Nobody died. So bonus points are achieved if you do construct a grate here before you open up the, the chamber. Magma safe grate and then you will have magma here and you can then make sure that no intruders get in there as long as they don't they as long as they're not able to destroy buildings if you want to be really safe you also you put up a grate and then you put up a a drawbridge right behind that made out of magma safe material and put it up as soon as a building destroyer comes because building destroyers they may be they might be able to destroy grates but they cannot destroy um, bridges. So when you raise the bridge again, you have a filled reservoir in there and it's slammed shut and sealed from the rest of the world. It's up to you. I just wanted to introduce a couple of ways and means how you can make your magma reservoir safe from outside intruders, but I repeat it's so important that you do this because the way I built it here without a barrier between there, it is a risk. Why so? Because a magma forge needs a connection to the magma below so we need to channel out a tile here and it's really important that you never ever channel out the middle tile because that's actually the tile where the dwarf will uh, stand on to work so when we now set up the magma furnace the magma smelter it goes like this so i use this tile here and this is the access tile for for the magma forge if you build it wrongly you will be still able to build the forge on a tile where there's no magma, but you won't be able to queue any orders in, in it. So you notice you made everything right when it's looking like... Come on. Bit of slow poke here. Here. When it's uh, behaving like that, when you click it and the menu here opens, the magma forge is operational. If nothing happens when you click the add new task button, it didn't work so this way you can build the rest of your industry and since there's always an open tile here that's why the barrier here is so important that being said a bridge connected with a lever raised up once this basin is full here is all it needs so you'll be safe forever i think i have brought up all the things you need to know feel free to leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or add-ons on the methods that i introduced here i'm always so happy when these tutorials here get spiced up with the knowledge of all these people here i can't compete with the uh, 15 to 20 years experienced players and i'm super happy when we have a wealth of information below those videos leave a thumbs up on that if you want to make it more visible for everybody else there is also a playlist link down there leading to all the other Dwarf Fortress tutorials. Please subscribe, it really helps me a ton if you do so. And thanks to all the supporters of this channel, you guys rock. You all have a wonderful day and see you next time.